Welcome back to the special edition of Cover Buying Today. I'm Ted Benito, your guest host with my very special guest, Tamlin Tamita. So Tamlin, when we left off, um, mm -hmm. uh, you wanted to be a teacher growing up. For me and other artists, mm -hmm. uh, there's a point where the artist is already, is, comes to a, a life kind of ep epiphany mm -hmm. about this is what I want to do. Mm -hmm. This is what I want to do in terms of the arts, performing, creative. What was that point for you? At what point did you say, I want to do this? It was pretty much after Karate Kid. Really? After Karate Kid, because um, I was attending UCLA and I went back to try to finish my degree. UCLA! UCLA! Okay. But uh, I, I went back to UCLA and um, thinking back at uh, all the ability to research my character and research ah, the history of okay. Okinawa mm -hmm. and research history about karate and uh, about Okinawan dance specific to my character. Right. It was what in line what I wanted to be was to teach history, to teach the stories that make us who we are as individuals, as families, as people, as a community, as a culture. Mm -hmm. And it was like, I can do that. I can make you know, uh, strong choices. Right. and relevant choices right. into telling stories that are pertinent to myself as Tamlin Tamita, as mm -hmm. just a, as a regular individual, mm -hmm. but that could be important to the Asian American community because I knew pretty much I would be representing mm -hmm. and perhaps being considered a role model. Yes, very much. And, it, and it's like something that's kind of trepidatious. It's like, I'm not no role model. It's like, I'm just me. I want to be me. I don't want to live by no rules or anything like that. <laughs> and you have to take that responsibility because if your face is on camera, yes. you're speaking for a lot of people and these people look at me and say, wow, I want to be like her, or I want to yeah. think like her, or I want to hear what she has to say. And even though I might say things that are inconsequential or stupid, unintelligent, at least I know I have the power to say, you know, maybe you might have that power. So I'm not saying listen to me, but listen to yourself and to learn for yourself, gather knowledge for yourself. And right. that's what I'm, the message I'm trying to pass along. It's the, so it was after Karate Kid, it was like, wow, all these people are, are watching me, and it's like, I better have something good to say. And it was a real, you know, uh, 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 epiphany in saying, I have to accept this kind of power, this kind of responsibility, mm -hmm. this kind of station in life to say, if I'm going to be here, I might as well use it for good. And, and okay. it was something that was really important to me. That, well, you do the well, same thing. You organize I things only, for our community. I only and try. You ask people, I try my best. <laughs> yeah. That's all we're doing is trying our best. And right. as long as we, you know, come up with team players, for, for how many years have we known each other? It's like, Seven I, can, I right. can say, Seven, you know, nine. you call me, I call you, and you say, yeah, sure, I'll do it. Just, <laughs> just pencil it in. Just pencil it yeah, in. Yeah, pencil it in. <laughs> just, just remember, I might forget, like today. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we talked about film. Let's And, and yeah. one of the things I do is I love to channel surf, and it's great, because when I channel surf, I always end up somehow watching you on an episode, like, oh, there she is on yeah, Rolling there Grace. There's, again, there's yeah. on Am Jag. I a good girl or a bad so, girl. Yeah. You've done soap operas, you were on yeah. Glee, and now you, you, I see you on Teen Wolf. Yeah. And Resurrection. I'm going to talk about Teen Wolf in okay. a bit. Any standard experiences in television, in your television episodic recurring role Again, history? I, 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 all if, the same? We, if we scroll down the list, I could say, oh, this <laughs> happened there, this happened there. You know, I, I think actors are, are really lucky because we collect stories about celebrities yeah, yeah. or just the fact that we're pretending to have a life right. on screen or on set. Right. And these people fall in love with the characters, they fall in love with our stories, and we could tell them, psst. <laughs> you have to know what really, really happened on set because it, 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 it's, you know, it's the undercurrent, it's the behind the scenes kind of stuff. So you right. have the, the story that you fell in love with on TV, like on Glee, mm -hmm. but then you go, but you know, you know, mm -hmm. Harry Shum is really, really a great dancer and Mama was like you know, <laughs> totally off her, yeah, totally off her rocker. That's great. I, yeah. I know we met when I first did, I think it was two, 10 years ago. Yeah. I did a co-production of Jessica Hagedorn's Dog Eaters at SEPA, which you came to come and see mul yeah. multiple times, I remember. Yes, multiple times. So I know there's an, an affinity for theater. Yes. And you've done a lot of theater. Not as much as I want to because it doesn't pay. <laughs> <laughs> So, but wait, come on, it's a but winter... But it, pays, it, it pays soulfully. Okay, that's what I was mm -hmm. going to say. Of the genres that you've worked in, mm -hmm. what has been the most satisfying or fulfilling to you as an actor? By, by far, theater. Why? Because you get to actually palpably, tangibly feel the electricity 
with an audience in, while you're in the story. On film, you have to wait a year. I mean, that's the natural <laughs> right. You have to wait a year before you sit into a dark audience with theater in, in, inside a movie theater, and then you you know you feel the you know the roar of laughter or the you know the the tears or just the sighs of relief or anticipation with an audience. Right. But right, right, you know right. they're seeing something that's kind of manufactured because it's you know you're seeing us being filmed, but in the editing room they're going to chop and snip it because you know I have a hair on my cheek or I said a word <laughs> wrong or my clothes aren't you know sitting on my body correctly so it's edited but on theater it's like if something happens I have to react to that it's like if we're in a love scene together and right. I bump over this table it's like I have to take care of that it's like I can't ignore it and it's like the audience sees like mistakes but life is full of mistakes and it's learning how to deal with them that makes it exciting oh, it's like a, oh my god what is she going to do it's like she's going to pick the table and she's going to toss it because i'm just going to kiss ted it's like, a, this is the only thing that matters to me that's that's a that's great the, perspective yeah that's the thing about theater and then when you see the audience responding you are open to hearing how they respond and it might be something that you never expected it's like you might be saying this heartbreaking line to you and somebody might be laughing because they might have experienced the same thing and they're just laughing at it because they they know of what it feels like to be heartbroken or what they're anticipating my character is going to say to you. It's, right. it's all in the audience reaction and that's the magic because all the people who are watching are coming with different experiences right. Correct. and it's like they're going to react each individually mm -hmm. and that's what's, what's really special about it. Really, awesome. really special. Well, I love that perspective. I'm a theater buff now yeah. because of you. Ah. <laughs> we'll be back with my special guest, Helen Tamita, on this edition of Cover Today.